Oh, hang on a sec. Uh, we'll try it again. I can, we can't seem to hear you just yet. Hi, Kimmy. Hello. Can oh, you there me? you are. It probably was just unmuted, okay. but good to have you here. Good afternoon. How is the Philippines? And uh, yes, good afternoon. And thank you. Thank you for having us. I'm actually here in Bali right now. Oh. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Just straight up though, can you tell us more about the idea behind Smile Train and how um, uh, how much uh, you know how much impact it has had in the region so far? Yes, thank you. So Smile Train is an international cleft charity, and as you mentioned, we support programs or services for those who are born with a cleft. This includes surgery, mm -hmm. speech therapy, orthodontics, nutrition counseling, and even psychosocial programs to help with the patients and their families. Now, Smile Train applies a sustainable model that provides training, funding, and resources to empower local medical professionals in more than eight, uh, 90 countries to provide 100% free cleft repair surgery and comprehensive cleft. Now, can you tell us what makes your methods different? Yes, so, so you're right. We partner with local doctors who are in the communities who provide a care needed in local hospitals. This means that a child born with a cleft can receive care all year round. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, you know, what typically is known as a mission where doctors fly in and then stay there for a week and then they fly out and then they're no longer available. Mm -hmm. But here in Indonesia or all over the world, in mo many developing countries, we've partnered with local doctors and local hospitals so that the care can pr be provided even on a daily basis. Mm. No, um, just out of curiosity, uh, how can uh, a family, perhaps when a child is born with cleft, um, how can a family apply for that? And are, are there any specific criteria, or can anybody, you know, be selected to to receive the benefits of your institution? Yeah. So our goal is to provide access to those who need it. Mm -hmm. So what we would like to do is is raise awareness about Smile Train's work around the country. And if you could contact us through our social media pages, Smile Train Indonesia on Facebook, Smile Train Indonesia on Instagram, um, we will be able to refer you to a partner hospital closest to where you live. Ah, okay. Well, Smile Train applies the teach a man to fish approach now by supporting education and training. Can you tell us more about this approach? Yes, so as I mentioned earlier, we do work with local doctors mm -hmm. and in areas like where there are no trained cleft teams, we are investing in further education, educating and training uh, more healthcare professionals to be able to provide the care that the patients need. Mm. We've also heard that, you know, as you mentioned before, it is, you know, you're teaming up with local governments and local institutions. We've also heard that there are families who brought their children from hundreds of miles away to receive this care because Smile Train partners um, with surgeons live among the people. So they would perform hundreds of cleft surgeries a year. How about Indonesia? How common are the cleft, um, you know, uh, cases here? And how much of an impact have you had in Indonesia so far? So as earlier mentioned, there are, it's estimated that there's about 8,500 Indonesians born with a cleft every year. Mm -hmm. And we're proud to say that this year, we've actually achieved supporting over 100,000 surgeries in the country. 100,000, wow, amazing. Yes. <laughs> so Kimi... Um... And we're continuing to do more. <laughs> <laughs> Kimi, uh, so you are now in Bali, as you mentioned earlier. Um, and yesterday, Smile Train Indonesia also marked the new milestone. Can you tell us more uh, the details about the journey of smiles in Bali? Yes, and I saw photos earlier you were showing, um, and that is Miss Urvashi Rautela. Mm -hmm. Urvashi is a Bollywood actress and a former Miss Universe in India. And she just joined us, and we just launched her as a, one of our global ambassadors. Oh, nice. very interesting. Lots more different ways to engage your community, but specifically to Indonesia, though. Are there any challenges that you face in Indonesia in implementing your programs? Yes, there are a lot because, as you know, obviously, um, Indonesia is an archipelago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the development of health infrastructures, health systems, or even the presence or distribution of doctors, nurses, and cleft teams, members of the cleft teams, 
is not even. Um, and this is a big challenge for us. So we're trying our best to be able to train more surgeons, more speech pathologists, more cleft orthodontists, so that they can provide care in the areas where they live. And you also mentioned travel. Patients sometimes travel for days to be able to get surgery and care. And so we're hoping that we, are bring, we can mm -hmm. bring these services closer to them. Hmm. So one very interesting um, thing, of course, is there any prevention for the mothers-to-be so that the child does not suffer a cleft, or a cleft lip and palate? Unfortunately, we are not aware mm -hmm. um, of any ways to prevent cleft. Mm -hmm. the, the causes of cleft is multifactorial, which means there's many reasons for it. It's partly genetic, partly the environment, uh, and other different factors that we can't really pinpoint which one is the one that's most involved in, in, in developing a cleft in your child. Um, having good maternal health is always a good recommendation but it's not a uh, guarantee mm. that it will prevent cleft. Now, uh, Kimi, I know earlier you mentioned about um, building awareness. So speaking of the awareness about cleft lip and palate, uh, please describe what would happen if society or parents or family of the cleft lip born baby, baby didn't take it seriously and uh, didn't take it seriously immediately. So what is the long-term effect of uh, and, and um, of the, uh, would there be any damages of the condition or physically or mentally? Yes, definitely. So ideally, mm -hmm. a child who was born with a cleft lip should be operated on when they're babies. Mm -hmm. right. And Smile Train can provide the support as early as three months old for as long as the child is healthy enough for surgery. And for a cleft palate, which is the hole in the roof of your mouth mm -hmm. inside, Ideally, the surgery is done between 9 to 18 months. Now, if that's not repaired, following these ideal timelines, there could be repercussions on health, on speaking, on breathing. Uh, many children are more sickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they have not received surgery, some of them refuse to go to school. They're unable to make friends or socialize. They're unable to find a job when they're older. Mm -hmm. because having a cleft, open cleft palate affects their speech and of course their well-being, their self-confidence and, and, you know, and the way they um, socialize. I see. Well, if well, now that you were speaking of you know, a lot of um, the different cases that you've already handled, is there a particular case that was very dear to your heart, something that would trigger uh, like even more... Um, you say it trigger others to take an immediate step if they have babies or kids that um, are affected by this particular disability or disorder. Of course, throughout the many, many years I've been with Smile Train, I've met a lot of patients and each of them are very special. Um, I think one of the patients that I remember most mm -hmm. is somebody I met also here in Bali about three years ago. Um, his name is Martinus. He was seven years old then, and he and his dad traveled all the way from West Sumba and East Nusa Tenggara province. And both of them could not read and write. Oh. And so my hope then was that this child after surgery would be able to go to school and be able to create a better future, not just for himself, but also for his family. Oh. It's that effective, I mean, it's so important, especially because, um, you know, cleft lips, if, if, if you may, it's, it's something that is very, uh, in, it's a physical, you know, it's a physical um, condition that really affects self-esteem. And of course, not just the physical ability to be functional on a daily basis, but also socially, you know, affection and hope, hopefully um, all the help that you've been given, you know, um, is, is, is definitely changing the children's and even adults' lives. But, you know, you've hinted just a little bit of the projects that you did in Bali. Uh, perhaps can you tell us more a little bit about the project in Bali? Yes, so um, we hosted uh, Ms. Urvashi Rautela here in, in Bali, and she was able to visit our partner hospitals and our partner organizations providing cleft care here in the island. And 
Uh, we were also able to visit homes of patients um, to be able to see where they live, um, what their parents, and understand better what their parents do. Uh, so it was a, an eye-opener for her, and this is also one of our ways to raise awareness about the problems of CLEF and the challenges that families face. Um, I also want to mention that some of the patients that we see are quite older than what we'd like them to be. We've seen patients who are teenagers or even adults who've never had cleft surgery. Mm. So having these awareness initiatives is really a big help for us to be able to reach more patients and more people who need help. Right, and you mentioned earlier, so for mothers who have um, babies and kids with cleft lips, they can always contact your social medias to see how they can access you. But um, do, do you have a, um, an answer to this? Is there any prevention for the mother-to-be so the child does not suffer cleft lip and palate? Yeah, so I, as I alluded to earlier, it's very difficult to pinpoint uh, one way to prevent it. But having good maternal nutrition, taking care of yourself before and, you know, during pregnancy will help, might help. Mm -hmm. But um, there are still studies, studying um, what is the real cause of cleft because, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's multifactorial. So it's very difficult to actually say this is the cause and this is how we prevent it. Mm. So, um, of course, nutrition plays a big part. And uh, last but not least, perhaps... Um, if you could just uh, repeat, how can Indonesians reach Smile Train? Say, if our audience have information or want to refer our patient to you. Yes, please contact us on our social media sites. On Facebook, it's Smile Train Indonesia. On Instagram, it's also Smile Train Indonesia. And since this is across Southeast Asia, we are present in Cambodia and Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, the Philippines, and Malaysia as well. Well, Kimi, thank you so much and all the success to Smile Train, hopefully to more impact and changing the lives of children and adults to become, you know, um, more in uh, happier people in society. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you and thank you for having me.